On this week's joint of the week, we're gonna do the scarf joint, which is such a great joint. It's used in everything from large timber framing applications to kind of small decorative beams in furniture. But it can be done, there's like 15 different ways to do a scarf joint. We're gonna do one I think is really fun, which is this shape. It's gonna be a wedged mortise and tenon scarf joint. So it's gonna have a wed two wedges in the middle that bring the joint tight. And I'm gonna show you how to do it in a pretty efficient way, I think. We're gonna start by creating a template. I'm gonna show you how to mark that out. Then I'm gonna show you how to cut it efficiently where you don't have to use all hand tools to get it done. Um, so one of the things that's really important when you get this started is you mill up your lumber to the same thickness. We have some walnut and maple here. And when you're cutting the, your stock to width, you also cut your template material to width. That way you know that it will be the exact same distance as your real material. And so that way when you're doing things like finding center and all of that, uh, you know it's gonna line up on your pieces. So let's get going and let's come into the bench. I've modeled the joint in SketchUp and we're gonna use the dimensions to create our template. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and start cutting this. So here we go. Okay, so the first step is to identify a center line. One of my favorite ways to do that is with a set of calipers. This is three inches wide. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that to one and a half. And then what I like to do is I just take my calipers, drag them on one side, and then drag them on the other. Whoops. And then you know that's your center line. When you look at my CAD drawing here, uh, and I'll have this available for free on my website, um, you can see that essentially this is nine inches long. So our scarf joint is essentially four and a half, four and a half. So we're gonna measure out nine inches then we're gonna identify a center line, and then we're gonna start measuring up, and then these lines are uh, perfectly parallel to each other, and then there's a one inch gap in the middle. So you can see this is five inches, this is four inches, uh, and that's because we're gonna have a one inch hole in the middle there for our wedges. So uh, let me show you how I get this done. So now that we've erased our lines, um, I'm just gonna mark the area we're gonna keep because that way I know what to cut. Uh, and then I'm just gonna chop this up on the bandsaw and using uh, files and sandpaper, just get it right down to the line. I won't bore you with showing you how I cut this out. In fact, I've already done one, but my buddy Sean from Simple Cove just did a video. I'm gonna link that here in the corner. Go watch it. It's a great video for making templates. Uh, this video is gonna be about cutting it out. So we're gonna get some double stick tape. Let's tape this down to our stock and uh, get going. Let me show you how I do that. Okay, so our first step is we need to trace out our template onto our stock and then cut it out on the bandsaw. We'll come back later, we're gonna double stick tape it, hit it with a flush trim bit and get close. So what I love to do is I use the fence of my table saw because you know that's straight, you know your stock's straight, you know your template's straight. So then I just hold it down, I'll trace it out and then on the bandsaw you wanna make sure that you get as close to the line as possible because that's gonna really help you with your flush trim bit and your chisels when you go to clean this up. And you wanna make sure that your template doesn't move and you just do that. So there we go. Now we have a perfect outline here. Let's head over to the bandsaw. Okay, so now that we have our template attached back where it needs to go, and the reason why I got so close with the bandsaw, and you could do the same thing with a jigsaw, like it doesn't matter what tool you use to clear the waste, but just try and get as close as you can because it makes it easier on the router bit. And you know, with pieces like this, you can't go in there with a flush trim bit just for direction and all sorts of things. Uh, there's a couple places like you can't do this end grain because of the direction. So uh, the less that there is, the easier it is to clean up with your chisel. And the reason that the template is so important is that it gives you a reference place for your chisel to get the areas that you can't get, like the corners. Uh, it gives you a way to get started so your joint stays super true. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out, ensuring that I am cutting the right direction with the grain and then uh, we'll go ahead and go over to the bench and start fine tuning it to fit. So 
we're gonna go ahead and clean this up with a chisel. I'm going to use the template that we made as a reference area for the chisel. And then on some of these flatter areas uh, where I couldn't get the router bit in, I'm gonna use my chisel sort of like a plane and reference off the flat back and the flat surface from the flush trim bit and sort of clean it up like that. So we'll get this cleaned up and we'll start to fit these two pieces together here. And uh, then we'll cut the wedges and get it all put together. So here we go. We got everything together, fitting really nice. Uh, everything's really even. So now it's time to cut our wedges. And if you remember during our layout, that gap is one inch by half an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut two wedges, one of walnut, one of maple, that when they come together from opposite sides, uh, they're gonna fill that one inch by half inch gap. I'm gonna do that on the bandsaw, clean them up a little bit with a block plane. And they're not too critical, but the way that I'm gonna measure them is I'm gonna do three quarters of an inch wide by half an inch tall, and then make it a little bit extra so that I can kind of hammer them and get them to fit the way that I want them to, and then we'll flush trim them off. So let's head over to the bandsaw and cut those out. We've got everything fit up. It's looking really good. The wedges are good. Uh, the thing that you want to remember about the wedges is you don't want it to be too tall because it's going to pull your joint apart. So that's why you saw me taking some off the top there. We're going to get some glue on and some finish, and then we're going to go ahead and talk about this joint. So here we go. And that really came out cool, guys. That was a lot of fun. And I think this shows that, you know, a lot of times templates can be really beneficial and it shows that you don't have to do stuff like this all with hand tools. I think this way was really fast. It was really easy. And it's just a matter of laying out correctly and cutting that template. Go check out that video that Sean from Simple Cove did. I think it's a great informative video. And, uh, you know, get out there and try some of this stuff. This is the kind of thing that makes you a better woodworker. Practicing these skills with just some off cuts of wood is really going to help you become better in the shop. So, uh, guys, tell me what you'd like to see on joint of the week um and you guys i'm not doing a butt joint i know it's fun to put in the comments but i'm just not doing it thanks for watching guys stay safe in the shop and have a wonderful day so first task here is to measure nine inches and so i'm going to just go from our edge here because we know that this is square and then we'll square that line across so we know these will be the kind of exterior edges will be nine inches. And then we're gonna measure four and a half. So we're gonna identify our center line here. Square that through. So now we have two quadrants and now we're gonna do sort of equal things on both sides. Uh, our center line is here and I'm gonna start by measuring uh, a half inch in each direction this way. I'm gonna bring that down and that comes down an inch. Then we're gonna do the same over here. And then an inch up. And then both of these get taken over half an inch. And this is a square line. Your other lines are gonna be, these lines in the middle here, those are gonna be angled at about three and a half degrees. You don't need to know that measurement. I'll show you why here in a minute. But we're gonna take this line over square it up so that's going to be 90 and then this line here will be 90 as well now as you can see these two lines are parallel to each other uh, and so we're going to want to draw those 
Uh, so we do that by <clears throat> going down a half an inch here, and again, this is 90. So you wanna make sure that that's perfectly half an inch, and it should end right on your center line. So, and go over half an inch on your center line. So we have that one there, and then same thing here. It's gonna be that line right there. So that's where your little indent here is gonna end. And now connecting them is super easy. So the way you connect them is you go to the corner of your top shoulder here and your center line. Draw that out, do the same thing here. And so these lines are parallel. So you can see we've got 90 corners here, but then the corner that comes out is not 90. And that's why it's so great to make a template because then you don't have to worry about it. And now, very simply, we're gonna measure out <clears throat> uh, a half an inch all the way around our center line, but make sure that you stay on your line that is not square to the center, your 3.6 degree line, if you will, which again, you don't have to figure out because do that. Same thing here, and then you can just connect those two lines. Same thing over here. You can even, if you have a square like this, you can square it up to your line. Boom. So now, what you can do is you can erase this portion of your line here. this portion. So now that we've erased our lines, um, I'm just gonna mark the area we're gonna keep because that way I know what to cut. Uh, and then I'm just gonna chop this up on the bandsaw and using uh, files and sandpaper, just get it right down to the line. I won't bore you with showing you how I cut this out. In fact, I've already done one. But my buddy Sean from Simple Cove just did a video. I'm gonna link that here in the corner. Go watch it. It's a great video for making templates. Uh, this video is gonna be about cutting it out. So 